welcome to today's lecture on satellite communications. In the last two lectures, we have discussed about wireless communication. First of all, it was wireless LAN, which can give you coverage over a small geographic area. Then we have discussed the uh, cellular telephone network, which can give coverage over larger area, maybe a country. Today we shall discuss about another communication system which can give you global coverage and in all the cases as we have seen there is always broadcast communication where it is necessary where a medium is shared by a number of stations. So you have to use medium access suitable, suitable medium access control technique and here is the outline of today's lecture. First, I shall discuss about some of the important concepts related to satellite communication such as the concept of orbits, then the concept of footprint. Then we shall discuss about three different types of satellites, LEO, MEO and GEO, lower earth orbit, medium earth orbit and geostationary orbit. And I shall mention about the frequency bands which are used in the context of satellite communication. Then we shall consider one after the other the uh, different types of satellites, different categories of satellites like LEO satellites and its applications, MEO satellites and its applications, GEO satellites and its applications and finally, I shall discuss about the medium access control techniques used in uh, satellite communication. And on completion, the students will be able to explain different types of satellite orbits. They will be able to explain the concept of footprint of a satellite. They will be able to specify the categories of satellites and the, they will be able to specify the frequency bands which are used in satellite communication and they will be able to explain the uses of different categories of satellites. And finally, they will be able to specify the MAC techniques used in satellite communications. So, first we start with orbits. Although the number of orbits is very, very large in satellite communications, but they can be broadly categorized into three types and the three types are equatorial. As you can see here, this is the uh, equatorial plane and these are the poles, this is your earth and here is your uh, the orbit. So, uh, it is on the equatorial plane. Then it can be inclined with respect to the uh, earth polar line, vertical axis uh, or it can be polar. So, orbit can be uh, more uh, vertical in this direction that means polar orbits. So, you can have three different types of orbits and as you know the time required to make a complete trip around the earth known as period. That means, the time required to make a complete trip is known as a period. We are all familiar about the natural satellite that is moon and the period is known to you and but here we are talking about the artificial satellites and as you know the time required to make a complete trip around the earth which is known as period is determined by Kepler's law of period. There are several laws, but the Kepler's law of period specifies that that period t square is equal to 4 pi square by g m into r cube, where t is the period, g is the gravitational constant, m is the mass of the central body that is earth and r is the radius. You see this radius is different from the altitude from the surface of earth. So, whenever uh, sometimes the radius of the uh, orbit is given, sometimes the altitude is given, we have to, uh, you have to understand the difference between the altitude and the radius. Obviously, the altitude will be lesser than the radius. And so far as the footprint is concerned, signals from different satellite is normally aimed at a specific area called footprint. So, here as you can see a satellite is covering a very large area in this particular case. So, it can cover a very large area 
and power is maximum at the center of the footprint. Obviously, the power will be maximum here in the central part and as you go towards both sides, the, uh, the, uh, the it will decrease. That means, it decreases as the point moves away from the footprint. Now, uh, nowadays uh, different types of antennas are used in satellites and these are all electronically controlled. And for example, if phased array antenna is used, then the footprint can be dynamically changed. It can be small, it can be large, it can be controlled. So, the footprint can be uh, changed. For example, here the footprints are small as you can as it is visible here. So, this part, this part and this part. So, these are these are small. And another possibility is that on a particular spot the beam, beam can be focused for some duration which is known as the dwell time. So, uh, the amount of time a beam is pointed to a given area is known as the dwell time. And of course, uh, whenever it changes from one position to another it takes some time and that take the time is of the order of microsecond. So, the dwell time should not be very short or should not be very large. So, dwell time is controlled electronically and it can be focused on some parts for certain period of time and that time is usually of the order of few milliseconds. So, this is the dwell time and so we find that there are uh, two important concepts, one is footprint, another is dwell time in the context of satellite communication. Now, let us look at the different types of satellites that are used for communication. This is your, this is the surface of the earth and it was you know that first satellite that was launched by the Russians Sputnik and after Sputnik was launched there was, there was the discovery of Van Allen belt. Van Allen, Allen belts are essentially uh, uh, where there is high energy charge particles, protons, high energy protons are available and there are two such Val, Van Allen belts as you can see. One is uh, one is uh, here above about 3000 to 5000 and another is from above 15000. So, there are two Van Allen uh, belts which are and obviously, if satellites are plates placed in these uh, regions, then they will be destroyed by the high energy particles. So, satellites are plates placed uh, I mean avoiding these two uh, Van Allen belts. For example, uh, the low earth orbits which are in the region, uh, I shall show you another diagram which will give you better picture. For example, this is the earth and the low earth orbit LEO satellites are positioned between 500 to 2000 kilometer as you can see these are the, this is the uh, orbit. So, uh, the, uh, the uh, altitude is 500 to 2000 kilometer. On the other hand, the medium earth orbit which is between two uh, Van Allen belts is, is from 5000 to 15000 kilometers. These are known as medium earth orbits or medium MEO satellites, medium earth orbit satellites. And there is third, uh, uh, third uh, uh, orbit which is known as geostationary earth orbit geo. So, uh, that is at the precise distance of 35,786 kilometer. So, these are the three popular uh, uh, orbits which are used for placing sat satellites. However, there is another one in between MEO and the geostationary orbits that is your GPS global positioning system is another uh, uh, constellation of satellites which are used placed at, the, at a distance of to 20,000 kilometers. So, obviously, it is above the second Van Allen belt, but definitely much lower, um, much below the geostationary earth orbit, which is at the distance of about 35,800 kilometer. Okay. So, uh, as I mentioned, these orbits are chosen such as, the such as the satellites are not destroyed by high energy charged particles present in the two Van Allen beds. So, we find that we have broadly three types of orbits. 
Now, let us look at the frequency bands used in different uh, in the satellite communication. This is in the microwave range, we have already discussed about it microwave and where line of sight communication is performed, line of sight communication and there are several frequency bands L band which, uh, which uses two uh, frequency bands, one is for downlink, another is for uplink. So, frequency is in the gigahertz range. So, uh, downlink frequency is, uh, one is around 1.5 gigahertz, uplink frequency is around 1.6 gigahertz. S band where the downlink frequency is around 1.9 gigahertz, uplink frequency is around 2.2 gigahertz and this is the bandwidth available for data communication and C band which is very popular and widely used in geostationary satellites is uh, 4 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz, 4 gigahertz is downlink and 6 gigahertz is uplink. Then uh, these bands are gradually becoming congested and presently Q band is widely used and the Q band has got downlink frequency of 11 gigahertz and uplink frequency of 14 gigahertz around that. And then once the Q band gets exhausted or fully uh, utilized, then we have to go for K band, K band, which is in the range of 20 gigahertz for downlink and 30 gigahertz for uplink and which can give you very high bandwidth 3500 megahertz. So, we find the frequency bands and as I mentioned in all cases it is line of sight communication and it is in the microwave frequency range. Now, let us consider the uh, low earth orbit satellites. The low earth orbit satellites uh, is in uh, there are several examples uh, essentially uh, a, a single satellite is not used a constellation, uh, constellation, uh, constellation of satellites uh, very similar to cellular telephone network are used that work together as a network. So, not a single satellite, but a, but a constellation of satellites and number of satellites are used uh, in the uh, low earth orbit to form a network. Usually in uh, LEO satellites polar orbits are used that means in the range of 500 to 2000 kilometers. So, altitude is 500 to 2000 kilometer not the radius and typical value is 850 uh, kilometer and the period based on this altitude you can find out the time period which varies from 90 to 120 minute and for for example, for 850 kilometer altitude the period is 100 uh, minute and the satellite rotates at the speed of 20,000 to 25,000 kilometer per hour. And whenever a satellite is placed at this altitude the foot footprint can be 8,000 kilometer diameter and of course, you can focus over a narrower area. But this, this will be the maximum maximum uh, radius because uh, you know because of line of sight communication and earth's curvature the footprint cannot be very large and higher the altitude the diameter of the footprint the area called that can be covered 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 area can be larger and the leo uh, satellites can be broadly divided into two types first one is known as little leo in little leo they uh, they are they uh, they communicate uh, at uh, when i mean less than 1 gigahertz range for example we have seen that less than 1 gigahertz range is uh, uh, is when they don't use l band lesser than that then the big leo uses 1 to 3 gigahertz uh, one notable example is iridium we shall discuss about it and the third category of LEO satellites is known as is used for broadband internet access and one notable example is teledesic. I shall discuss more about these two systems iridium systems and teledesic systems. Let us first consider how they communicate. You know in case of low earth orbit there are three uh, possible types of transmission first one is communication or transmission between two satellites and which is known as inter-satellite link as you can see two satellites can communicate with each other. So, data transfer can be done, uh, communication can be done from one satellite to another satellite. Second 
uh, type of transmission is uh, gateway link. That means, there is a uh, earth station which is used as gateway and here for example, for this satellite this is the footprint and this is the footprint of the another satellite. And as you can see the uh, this, this satellite uh, can communicate with this satellite, another satellite and also the ground stations uh, or gateway links. So, this is known as GW8, GWL that is your gateway link and third is your user mobile link. So, directly the mobile phones can communicate with the satellite in this case. So, so, so there are three different types of links which are used for communication ISL, GWL and UML, user mobile link, gateway link and inter satellite link. And let us consider in little more detail the Iridium system. This project was started by Motorola in the year 1990 with the objective of providing worldwide voice and data communication service using handheld devices. So, the basic objective was that uh, with the help of the satellite people should be ab able to uh, talk to each other and that will cover a very large geographic area. And uh, <coughs> of course, it took quite, time, quite some time to materialize the project and after about 8 years uh, it materialized with 66 satellites and although the project started with 77 satellites initially, it started with 77 and because of this initial uh, number of was 77, the name Iridium has been taken because Iridium is the 77th element in our periodic table. So, the name has been taken from this, but unfortunately uh, I mean uh, the number of satellites got changed, but the name has been retained. So, so using 66 satellites, these are divided into 6 polar orbits. So, you have got 11 satellites in each orbit as you can see, each orbit has got 11 satellites and you have got 6 orbits 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, you have got 6 polar orbits uh, rotating around the earth and at an altitude of 750 kilometer, which is not far away from earth's surface. And uh, in each orbit you have got 11 satellites. And each satellite has 40 spot beams. So, the, the footprints of different satellites are shown here and total of 3168 beams are possible. However, all are not used around 2000 beams are actually used although possible spot beams are uh, 3168 beams. So, it can cover small geographic area uh, at a time and uh, by controlling the dwell time different, uh, 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 different spots can be covered. So, in this way the whole earth can be covered by using this constellation of 66 satellites used in Iridium system. Then another important uh, notable system that that is uh, that is worth mentioning is teledesic system. So it started with a very ambitious project uh, and by Craig McCaw and Bill Gates in the year 1990. Uh, in in the year 1990, uh, with the objective of providing fiber optic like communication facility. Uh, we have seen. The Iridium project was, uh, was uh, developed with the objective of providing uh, voice communication and at most low, low bit rate data communication. But this Iridium, this uh, teledesic project was developed with the objective of providing data transfer at a, at a much higher rate, very similar to uh, fiber optic like communication. In other words, to provide broadband service. And this uh, uh, teledesic system ultimately were designed with 288 satellites in 12 polar orbits. So, there are 12 polar orbits very similar to uh, the Iridium and there are 20, 228 satellites. So, you have got uh, 24 satellites in each orbit and you have got 12 such polar orbits and these are stationed. Uh, uh, at the at an altitude of 1350 kilometer compared to 750 kilometer of iridium 
and the communication is being done by, by using the KA band and uh, at a particular instant 8 neighboring satellites communicate with each other by using ISL inter satellite link and GWL is used between a satellite and a gateway and also the user mobile link is being used for communication between an user and a satellite. And uh, as we have already discussed satellite focuses its beam to a cell during a dwell time and it allows data rates of the order of 155 megabits per second for uplink and 1.2 gigabits per second downlink. I think such a high data rate is uh, quite sufficient for any type of communication both voice, video and data and that is why uh, this, this uh, we are telling that teledesic system uh, is, uh, has been, is being developed to provide fiber optic like communication but it can it has the potential to cover the entire earth uh, with the help of a uh, with 288 satellites now let us consider the mayo satellites these mayo satellites are positioned between two van allen belts uh, as we have discussed at an altitude typical altitude is 10000 kilometer and period is 6 hours not minutes as you can see as the alti altitude is increasing period is also increasing. So, it is 6 hours is the period for typical MAO satellites and uh, as I mentioned uh, global positioning system or GPS is possibly one of the very uh, popular satellite system used nowadays and this has been developed uh, I mean used for satellite based navigation system and this comprises a network of 24 satellites at an altitude of 20,000 kilometer with a period of about 12 hours. That means, twice per twice in a day a particular is set, uh, visible uh, uh, visible by a particular from a particular location and it is an it has the inclination of 55 degree. So, this was originally intended for military uh, applications that means, this particular satellite systems was, was uh, developed by department of defense of USA and original plan was to use it primarily for uh, military applications, but in the year 1990 they changed their policy and it was made available for civilian use. And with the help of this uh, GPS system. Uh, one can do uh, global positioning and from that it, uh, the, it has derived its name. Actually it allows land, sea and airborne users to measure their position that means, three dimensional position can be measured, uh, velocity uh, can be measured uh, and the exact time also can be measured with the help of a GPS receiver. So, a GPS receiver has been found to be a very invaluable tool to the captain of a airplane, to the captain of a ship and also for um, very I mean very soon it will be used by people who will be traveling, traveling on road vehicular traffic. So, every car owner, every ship owner, every uh, I mean pilot in the aircraft will be having such a receiver. And uh, the uh, not only the position, the velocity and time can be very accurately measured and the accuracy can be uh, within the range of 15 meters and that is the reason why it is one of the most widely used satellite for uh, measuring the position, velocity and time. Uh, this uh, global positioning system actually measurement is done with the by using uh, I mean it is used for land and sea navigation using the principle of triangulation. So, here you have got three known positions A, B and C, these are the three positions of a satellite and the position one this is one unknown position. It can be proved that if these three positions are known the, the position of un, uh, the, uh, the point of unknown position can be identified with the help of suitable device. So, that is being done with the help of a G GPS receiver. So, by time stamping the uh, signal is sent to A, B and C and the delay is measured and by which the distance uh, of A, B and C is measured and then 
the, if the point at which these three uh, diameters coincide that is the exact position. And the another satellite is used to provide the time that means these GPS satellites each having four, uh, four, um, four very accurate clocks based on uh, you know that uh, nuclear uh, material. So, those, uh, those, uh, those clocks gives very accurate time. So, the fourth satellite provides you the very accurate time and the other three uh, satellites gives you the uh, exact measurement of distance and with the help of that one can very accurately position the distance, time and the speed of, speed of a particular uh, vehicle or a airplane or a ship. So, the requirement is that at any point of time at least four satellites should be visible from uh, uh, visible uh, to the user or from any point of the earth. It is not necessary that it, it has to be on any point of the earth, it can be in space also. For example, air, from the aircraft also uh, it can be used. So, uh, a GPS receiver can find out the location of a map. So, nowadays there is no need to use the compass but you can use GPS receiver for, for the purpose of positioning. In fact, this was widely used in Persian Gulf War for identifying the position of different, uh, different uh, vehicles used in war. So, this is your GPS. Now, let us focus on the geo satellites. So, uh, to facilitate constant communication, the satellite must move at the same speed as the earth which are known as geosynchronous satellites. We have seen in case of MAO and LEO or even in GPS satellites, the satellite is moving around the earth and from a particular position if you uh, look at it, you will find its position keeps on changing. So, you have to uh, keep track of it, you have to uh, compensate for Doppler effect and other things you have to do. But if, if it is position. Uh, if it is so, so positioned that its movement is stationary with respect to a point on the earth, then it is called geostationary, uh, geosynchronous satellites. And there is a special situations when the geosynchronous satellites are on the equatorial plane. So, if it is on the equatorial plane, then uh, it is called geostationary satellites. That means, geostationary satellites are special case of geosynchronous satellites when the plane is on the equatorial region. So, it is it uses the equatorial plane uh, to place the satellites and <coughs> obviously, uh, you have got 360 degrees and with the present day technology, you can use up to 180 satellites in the equatorial plane and with the help of that, you can uh, do communication. And as I mentioned, the altitude is 35,786 kilometer and radius is 40,000, about 42,000 kilometer. That means, from the center of the earth, the radius is uh, 42,000 kilometer, but the altitude from the surface of the earth, it is from sea level, it is 35,786 kilometer. And period is exactly same as the uh, rotation of earth, that is your 20, roughly 24 hours. And as I mentioned, the orbit is on the equatorial plane. And as I mentioned, you can have at most 180 uh, geo satellites based on the present day technology. And by using KU band of, by you whenever KU band is used, uh, then you can have up to 180 satellites. But as you go for KA band, the number of satellites can be increased. Although you can have 180 satellites on uh, geostationary. Uh, you can have 180 geostationary satellites. Uh, the whole uh, globe can be covered by only by using three satellites. As you can see, by with uh, a particular satellite roughly covers one third of the earth. So, one, if one satellite covers one third of the surface of earth, then by using three satellites, the entire earth can be covered. In other words, with the help of three geostationary satellites, it is possible to have global communications from any, for any place on the earth to any other place on the earth, communication can be done with the help of three geostationary satellites. Now, let us look at the key features of the geostationary satellites. One important feature is 
the long round trip propagation delay. And as you know, uh, the distance is about 36,000 kilometer, and all, uh, even with the even with the uh, speed of this uh, with the speed of light that, that the electromagnetic radiation goes from the surface of earth to the satellite and comes back and the speed is uh, 3 into 10 to the power 8 kilometer uh, 8 the 3 into 10 to the power 8 uh, meter per second so even with that speed uh, it takes about 2 and 270 millisecond between two ground stations that means the round trip delay is 2 270 millisecond then when while designing system you have to take into this parameter particularly as we shall see when we shall consider the medium access control technique secondly uh, it is an inherently broadcast media so it does not cost much to send to a large number of stations now uh, we are familiar with our conventional telephone systems we use local calls then as the distance increases the cost of communication increases that means whenever you use std calls or whenever you use on uh, a call if you put a call to usa the you have to pay more that means the cost of communication increases with the distance but that is not true in the case of uh, satellite communication the cost of communication is same irrespective of the distance uh, between two points however it suffers from low pri privacy and security and for that reason suitable encryption technique is essential to ensure privacy and security so this is a very important aspect of communication then finally as i mentioned the cost of communication is independent of distance so you have to take into account these features or, or and you have to exploit them uh, and one of the system where it is widely these features are exploited is, is vsat very small aperture terminal let us look at it vsat stands for very small aperture terminal and this uh, normally uh, the ground the antenna of a ground station has to be uh, several uh, meters in diameter and as a result the cost of the antenna and the communication system is quite high but to make it available affordable to common people that means this vsat terminal was developed to make to make access to the satellite more affordable and without an intermediate distribution hierarchy that means direct direct communication can be done directly with the satellite at the same time it has to be made affordable to the common people with that objective vsat uh, very small aperture terminals were developed and for example most vsat systems operate in the q band ku band with an antenna diameter of only 1 to 2 meters so that is relate very small relatively small compared to the uh, bigger antennas that is being used in traditionally used and it requires only transmitting power of 1 to 2 watts for communication so this can be easily uh, this is quite the neither the power is very high nor the diameter is very high it is it can be very easily used in houses so there are several implementation approaches uh, the particularly they can be categorized into three types one way split two way and two way and uh, we shall discuss in more detail the one way and two way uh, the split two way is a, is a little special situations where vsat does not require uplink transmit capability which significantly reduces cost in split two way what is being done the community the satellite only uh, only uh, sends data in the downward direction using broadcasting or some other technique then the uh, there is no uplink uh, transmission from the ground station to the satellite and that uh, that communication is done with the help of some other system it can be pstn public switch telephone network or cellular te telephone network or whatever it may be so that's how it is a split two way systems where and the uh, uh, which does not require uplink transmit ca uh, capability that makes it simpler so this is used in many situation let us now consider the other two the one way and split two way communication system uh, or then the two way communication system in one way uh, vset configuration it is essentially uh, simplex communication we have we know that in simplex communication communication is 
uh, only in one direction and that is what is being done in this particular case. Uh, here for example, uh, there, is a, there is a master station, it sends data to the satellite and satellite relays it over a large geographic area. So, it is essentially the broadcast coverage area and uh, all the ground stations in this area can listen to what is being transmitted by the master station through the satellite. So, the satellite here uh, just acts as a relay in the sky and it is used for broadcast satellite service. That means, whenever something has to be broadcasted, then uh, this type of simplex communication can be used. For example, uh, as we shall see, the uh, satellite television distribution system uses this type of one way uh, uh, communication. Here, for example, here is the studio of the, uh, 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 the TV, Dudarshan and here is the uplink earth station and for the, the uplink earth station by using key band, uh, KV band uplinks the signal, then the satellite sends it to a number of cable TV, uh, uh, cable TV uh, service providers. So, the cable TV service providers have antennas located in their place and then they, the cable, cable TV operators distribute the television signals to a number of houses. So, uh, this is the uh, KV being uplink and here is the KV band downlink signals which are being received by the cable TV operators and then they, uh, they distribute it to the households. So, this is a satellite television distribution system. Nowadays, another important service is becoming popular that is your direct to home DTH service which is being uh, publicized by our Duradarshan. So, in, in direct to home service, uh, in the household uh, one can put an antenna which has the diameter of less than 1 meter and then uh, and you are by using one set top box directly from the satellite, the, the digitized television signals can be captured and then one can uh, put it on the TV. So, by bypassing the cable operators nowadays by using the direct to home service, this type of, uh, this type of one way communication is being used for television distribution, television signal distribution. <coughs> and although I have shown one large geographic area, you can have one small group also, uh, one group also, a small group. Uh, which requires some specialized service that is also possible in one way reset configuration. Now, let us look at the two way reset configuration. In this two way reset configuration, all the traffic is routed through the master control hub. Actually, the reset antennas are small in size and also the power of transmission is small. So, because of low gain antennas and small power that is being used in VSATs, direct communication between two VSATs is not possible. So, a master control station is being which is also known as hub. So, in this, in this case the configuration is somewhat like this. This is your, uh, this is your satellite. So, you can say this is your satellite. This is your satellite. Then you have got your uh, that VSAT and they, they, that hub and you have got a number of VSAT antennas. So, the it is like a star. So, the all the uh, VSAT hubs are communicating through this master control station or hub. So, this hub is acting as a as a, at the, is at the center of the uh, star topology and the communication is done uh, in this way. So, this is the start topology that is being used. However, uh, nowadays with the advanced advancement of uh, technology, it is possible to have direct communication between two VSAT antennas. So, in such, in such case, each VSAT has the capability to communicate directly with an, any other VSATs. You do not require a hub. So, this one can be considered uh, as the uh, mesh topology. Although the satellite is there, 
is being used as the via media, but here say suppose this is one V set, this is another 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 V set, all of them can communicate with each other. So, it forms some kind of mesh network uh, since they can communicate with each other. So, it forms a mesh. So, we can see uh, it is a mesh type of network that can be formed and although V set is there uh, which is used as via media. So, this is two way V set configuration using mesh topology. Now, you require uh, um, um, medium access control pro protocol for satellite communication. Why you require is explained here and it is a very important uh, design issue in satellite communication, particularly how to efficiently allocate the transponder channels. As you know, each satellite is having uh, say 12 to 20 transponders and each uh, using each transponder, the communication can be done with the earth stations. Now, in, uh, in, uh, in satellite communications as you know, from the satellite to the earth station is it is essentially a broadcast type of communication. So, there is no need for medium access control. However, as you can see by using the same, same frequency band uplink frequency, the ground stations are simultaneously communicating to the satellite and as a con uh, consequence this uplink channel uh, need is a is shared by all the earth stations that is communicating with the satellites and that requires medium access control. And uh, there are uh, many medium control techniques are used uh, based on the environment and application and they can be broadly categorized into uh, the following types. First one is fixed assignment protocol in this case uh, the number of uh, uh, number of uh, users is small. So, you can use fixed assignment and another approach is demand assignment protocols which is known as DAMA demand assignment multiple access and in some situations you can use random access protocols or it, it can be hybrid of random access and reservation protocols. Finally, uh, they can be either distributed or centralized control. Now, we have already discussed about the medium access control techniques of sat for satellite communication. As you know that collision based uh, medium access control technique cannot be used because, because of uh, long round trip delay. Also, we cannot use token passing based uh, techniques. So, only possibility is to use aloha or slotted aloha and the reservation based protocols. Let us see uh, what are the different types used. And as I, um, as I have discussed, we can use uh, FDMA, TDMA and CDMA uh, uh, depending on various applications. And FDMA, FDMA provides the simplest communication because here there is no need for synchronization, there is no need for uh, collision, no question of collision. However, when TDMA technique is used, uh, you have to do synchronization because uh, at different time slots, different uh, channels, uh, uh, different uh, the at different uh, channels uh, can be used in different time slots for communication, and this there can be collision if two stations, ground stations, send signal simultaneously. So synchronization is necessary, and there is a possibility of collision in TDMA, but that can be resolved. And another approach that can be used is CDMA where it is possible to have parallel communication using the same channel and at the same time and as you can see N stations can communicate with each other. So, CDMA, TDMA and FDMA these are all used in satellite communications. Let us look at the contention free medium access control protocols. First one is the fixed assignment uh, protocols using FDMA. As I mentioned, FDMA is the simplest one. They allocate different frequency band to different count stations uh, and communication can be done in parallel using uh, different uh, frequency bands. Or, or you can use TDMA and this, this allocation is possible. Allocation of channel assignment is static, so it is fixed. So, it does not change with time and this is suitable when the number of stations is small. 
So, when the number of stations is small permanently some frequencies or time slots can be allocated to the ground station and this, this provides you deterministic delay. In spite of the long uh, propagation delay, the, this delay will be deterministic because there is no collision here and which is important in real time applications. On the other hand, this demand assignment uh, based protocols DAMA is suitable uh, when the traffic pattern is random. That means, a particular st station ground station sends for some time, then waits for a for quite some time that means, when the traffic is bust in nature. In such a case, you have to use random assignment based protocols and, and particularly when the traffic pattern is random and unpredictable. And efficiency is improved by using reservation based on demand. The reservation process can be implicit or explicit. We, we have already discussed and I shall give you a quick summary. And here as you can see how TDMA can be used. We know that it is at the time, uh, the time slots are divided, the time is divided, in, I mean it is divided into time slots and a frame is then. Here in this particular case, a frame has got four time slots. So, you can see different ground stations are sending at different time slots. So, this is being sent. So, uh, this one is being sent by one satellite uh, ground station, these, these packets are being sent by another ground stations these packets are being sent by another packet ground stations and this is the TDMA stream which is broadcasted by the satellite towards all the ground stations. So, you can see it is following the same order first this one, then this one, then this one. Uh, so, the same order is being followed this followed by this, this followed by this, by followed by this. So, and this is being repeated uh, uh, one after the other. So, this is how the TDMA works. <coughs> and in case of random access based MAC protocols as I have already mentioned, we cannot use uh, collision uh, detection multiple access protocol cannot be used. So, it has to be either pure aloha or selective reject aloha or slotted aloha and with this you can combine uh, reservation. Uh, so, it can be reservation R aloha or reservation aloha or sometimes a combination of random access with reservation access protocol. So, these are used to uh, this hybrid technique is used to have advantages of both random access and uh, time division multiple access. Let us quickly have a recapitulation of the techniques that we used. Uh, we have already discussed in detail that reservation aloha that is being used when the number of ground stations is larger than the number of channels. So, the reservation is done by uh, directly trying to send in different slots. So, this is called reservation aloha. So, there is a possibility of collision in different slots, but once a station is able to transmit in a particular slot. So, in the subsequent slot the same, the same uh, station will send. However, uh, if, a, if a slot is free uh, right now and in the next frame two stations can send, so there will be a collision which has to be overcome. And another technique is used whenever you have uh, when the number of stations is smaller than the number of slots, then you have got uh, ex impl uh, ex implicit allocations. So, this is one slot per station since this number of stations is small implicit uh, allocation implicit allocation is there. Uh, and then uh, the excess slots can be uh, ac uh, accessed by using reservation aloha or slotted aloha. That means, this part has to be uh, it is acquired by contention based, te based techniques. This is binder scheme and in Robert's scheme as we know a separate slot is being used which is known as reservation slot which is used for the purpose of uh, establishing reservation performing reservation and then data can be sent in different slots. And then there are centralized uh, medium access control protocol, the centralized FDOMA is an is extension of Roberts protocol. Here uh, this six, there are six reservation mini slots as you can see of variable length, uh, but here there is one of the ground stations acts as some kind of master and which does the reservation and variable length data can be transferred. 
transferred in this fixed priority oriented demand assignment. And finally, you have got packet demand access multiple access, packet demand access multiple access protocol PDAMA, where there is a leader and this leader control, you have got leader control slot, then guard, uh, guard slot. In leader control slot, acknowledgement is give, given to, uh, to other stations uh, about the reservation of slots and this guard, guard slot is being used as a gap, so that uh, the uh, ground stations get some time before reservation can be performed from the next time frame. And these are the information subframe where the transmission is performed based on the reservation. So, this is this gives you a quick summary of the uh, medium access control techniques that is being used for satellite communication. So, before we discuss about the questions uh, for this lecture, let me summarize about the different uh, techniques, uh, different uh, systems where medium access control techniques are used. First, we have discussed about the local area networks, uh, where uh, we can use the contention based protocol like uh, CDMA, uh, C CDMA uh, CSMA, CD, uh, collision uh, carrier sense multiple access with collision detection and also we can use token ring. And we have seen their applications in uh, Ethernet, fast Ethernet and gigabit Ethernet techniques. And then we have discussed wireless LAN, where a collision is avoided by using a protocol known as CSMSCA. And then we have discussed the uh, satellite, tele the, uh, in the uh, cellular telephone networks, where FDMA, TDMA and CDMA are used. And now, in today's lecture, we have discussed about the uh, uh, satellite system, satellite communication system, where we have seen how various uh, techniques, can, medium access control techniques are used for the, for sharing the uh, communication channel. So, here is time to discuss the, uh, give you the questions for this lecture. <coughs> uh, first question is, distinguish between footprint and dwell time. Second question is, explain the relationship between the Van Allen belts and the three categories of satellites. Third question is, explain the difference between the Iridium and Teledesic systems in terms of uses. Fourth question is, what are the key features that affects the medium access control in satellite communication? Fourth question is, what are the possible VSAT configurations? Now, it is time to give you the answer to the questions of lecture number 31. First question is, first question was, what is the relationship between a base station and a mobile switching center? Answer is, a number of base stations are under the control of a single mobile switching center. A base station is equipped with a transmitter receiver for transmission and reception uh, and reception for transmission and reception with the master stations uh, in its footprint. On the other hand, the, uh, must, uh, the MSC uh, the master uh, that uh, co coordinates communication among base stations and the PSTN network. It is a computer ad, computer control uh, system responsible for connecting calls, recording calls and also do the billing. Second question was, what is reuse factor? Explain whether a low or high reuse factor is better. Actually, the fraction of total available channels assigned to each cell within a cluster is known as the reuse factor. So, if you have got n cells in a cluster, then the reuse factor is 1 by n. Capacity of a cellular telephone system depends on this reuse factor. So, as the reuse factor increases, then you have got larger number of cells. So, you can uh, the, the covered area in each cell decreases. On the other hand, if the n is small, then the area is larger. Third question is, third question was, what is AMPS and in what way it differs from DMS? AMPS is your advanced mobile phone system, is purely analog cellular telephone system developed by Bell Labs and primarily it was used in North America and, uh, and some other countries. On the other hand, DMS is a backward compatible digital version of AMPS. We have discussed about the DMS in the last lecture in details. Fourth question was, what is 
mobility management. Mobility management deals with two important aspects, hand of management and location management. Hand of management maintains service continuity uh, as you have seen when a mobile station migrates out of its current base station into the footprint of another base station. To, to do this, it is necessary to keep track of users current location that is being performed with the help of location management. So, location management and hand of management together performs the mobility management. Fifth question was, what is the maximum number of callers in each cell in a GSM? As you know, in a multi frame uh, used in GSM, 8 users can transmit in 8 slots and there are 124 such channels uh, bands, which are sent simultaneously using TDMA. So, the total number of callers in a cluster is 124 into 8 and as the reuse, reuse factor is 7 in GSM, the maximum number of callers in a cell is 124 into 8 by 7 that is roughly equal to 141 or 140. Sixth question was distinguish between soft and hard handoff. Uh, as we know, in case of hard handoff, a mobile station communicates with only one base station at a time. So, when it moves out from one base station to another, first it breaks connection, uh, breaks connection with the existing one before establishing connection with the new base station. On the other hand, uh, in soft handoff, a mobile station can communicate with two base stations simultaneously and gradually the control is transferred from one base station to another base station. So, with this we come to the end of today's lecture. Thank you.